had spent most of my early life raising funds for St. Jude. I participated in Mathathon and fundraising events through my church youth group. We did bake sales and garage sales and never thinking that it someday would affect me. I was 18 when I was diagnosed and it dawned on me as I went through my treatment that now I'm one of the cancer kids and now I'm giving somebody else the opportunity to raise funds for me. I started my freshman year at Christian Brothers University. My friends and I really wanted to learn more about Teak and we were going to go to a social gathering and I just really wasn't feeling well. My best friend was my roommate and he said, if you don't feel better in the morning, I'm gonna take you to the emergency room. And the morning came and I felt much worse. And he literally picked me up and put me in his car and took me to the emergency room. And that's where they did a CAT scan on me and found tumors in 90% of my body. The doctors said that if I had stayed in my dorm room for three more days, I would have died there. They diagnosed me with an unknown cancer and said that we needed to get me to St. Jude as soon as possible. There's nothing really that can prepare you for the C word. There was a lot of crying and a lot of uncertainty. That all changed when I got to St. Jude. There is a vibe in this hospital that exudes life and survival and the ability to fight and carry on and that gets into you and it makes you a tougher person but it helps to make you a survivor. I was at work and we were having our Thanksgiving luncheon and my wife called me. She said, I've been having some problems and I went to the doctor. I just want to let you know that I'm pregnant. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, nope. I gotta stop for a second. Yeah, okay. And I said, what did you say? And she said, I'm pregnant and I passed out onto the ground. After two years of chemotherapy and radiation at St. Jude, I was told that the likelihood of me having a child probably would not be in my future. And so my whole life changed again, because not only did my life change when I went to St. Jude, my life changed when I found out that I was going to have a son. Once I accepted a bid to talk at Epsilon, I felt like I was doing the right thing and I was really happy with my decision. They, they always supported me, they helped me when I was down, they picked me up when I literally could not walk. Pledging Teak and not knowing that I was going to be a St. Jude patient, it was a shock to me to find out that Danny Thomas was a Teak. Is there such a thing as coincidence? I don't think so. I think everything happens for a reason. Here we are in Memphis, Tennessee, and the world is here. And kids are coming in from all over the place and they're being treated for all these diseases and all these different types of cancers. St. Jude not only helps these children with catastrophic diseases, but they also take that research and they apply it. They freely share that research with the outside world. So the fundraising that you're doing for St. Jude and helping a child here, you're not helping just a single child. You're helping the entire world. And to see my fraternity actively raising money to help the hospital and its continuing mission, I think that's an amazing thing to be a part of. It is such an honor to be a Teak and a privilege to be a St. Jude survivor.
Right, well, let's get started. Um, good evening, Teak Nation. Right. You guys can do better than that. Good evening, Teak Nation. You know, between you and me, uh, the star of that video makes me a little bit emotional. Uh, his delivery is superb. Is everyone having a great time at Conclave? Awesome, awesome. Where in the house are my frauders from Pi Epsilon Chapter? Yeah. Woo! There you go, give them a hand, everyone. Without these guys, this story would not be possible. Real quick, I'd like to point out my lovely wife, Dawn Rose, who is over there. Um, I'd like to thank her for her support and patience through all of this. It's, it's been a, a trip together and I love you. Um, as you saw from the video, I'd like to also introduce my son, Matthew Rose, who's over there. <laughs> Future Teak Legacy. That's right, that's right. So Matthew is living proof of the miracles of St. Jude. Without him, or without St. Jude, he would not be possible. The knowledge St. Jude has acquired from their research has led to increased patient survivability, but also better patient quality of life in the long term. I'd like to also take the time to thank Teak and St. Jude Alsac for flying us down here to be with you tonight. We are incredibly blessed. Let me flash back to 1984. My family lived in Houston, Texas, where my father was an engineer for Texas International Airlines. Continental Airlines, who ironically is no longer in business, bought out the airline and my father was laid off. He got a contract job at NASA, but when that contract was over, there was no work to be had in the recession. A friend told my dad about a job in Memphis, Tennessee with a tiny little company there that specializes in delivering packages overnight. So my father applied, got the job, and moved us there. We had no idea why we were dragged there. Let me tell you this, there are no coincidences. That's gonna be a recurring theme here. But if you don't believe that, just humor me for a minute and say it with me. There are no coincidences. There are no coincidences. Thank you. Let's flash forward to the fall of 1994, the start of my freshman year in college. I was feeling anything but blessed. I had been sick all summer with what was incorrectly determined to be mononucleosis. As you just saw, my best friend and broader Rodney Paulus took me to the hospital where I was diagnosed with an unknown cancer. A close family friend who is a local doctor referred me as a candidate for St. Jude with only two weeks to spare. I was 18 at the time and there's a cutoff on how old you can be to get into a children's hospital. We now know why we were sent to Memphis. To quote the late science fiction author Douglas Adams, I may not have gone where I intended, but I think I have ended up where I need to be. Once again, there are no coincidences. To give you an idea of how good St. Jude is, when I was diagnosed with T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the survival rate for this disease was a measly 73%. 73%, that's terrible. Especially if you're the one looking at 73%. Guess what, I've got awesome news for you. Today, St. Jude patients with the same diagnosis have a 94% survival rate. <laughs> That's amazing, 94%. By a show of hands, how many of you out there are what you would consider to be planners? Like you plan ahead for the future. Let's see it, come on. That's, that's great, you should always plan ahead. Um, but what happens if your plan does not work out? As you know, it's always better to have a plan B in case something goes wrong. 
Nobody plans on having cancer. Nobody plans on getting it. Nobody plans on dealing with it. But everyone in this room has either had cancer or knows someone very close to them that has. To take this to another level, nobody plans on having to pay for cancer. For patients, St. Jude is a miraculous plan B. With St. Jude, no family ever receives a bill. If you did not realize that, then let me say it again so it sinks in. No family ever receives a bill for treatment or travel or any other thing that they need during their time at St. Jude. That's amazing. Here's the key point. It's one of the reasons why each and every dollar organizations like Teak raise is so very important. Some of you will notice that in the video I'm wearing my fraternity pledge pin, and yes, I understand we now call it a candidate pin. You'll notice that I have it here on my, on my lapel, and um, I don't want to call it a candidate pin tonight. I want to call it a pledge pin, okay? And I, I wore it because on the day that we shot the video, I couldn't find my alumni pin. There are no coincidences. I wear my pledge pin tonight so that you can see it, along with my alumni pin, which I finally found, and of course, my badge. But I want to take this opportunity to ask you to open up your heart and your minds to making a new pledge with Teak for St. Jude. See, candidate just doesn't work. By the way, if you see me after this and you want, oh, well, let me see a little bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> While I was sick, my family and friends created this bumper sticker and I want to hold it up for all, everyone to see. It says miracles happen on it, okay? And I'll just put that right here. Consider pledging yourselves and your chapters to creating a new miracle for the patients at St. Jude. I got my miracle twice over. I'm alive, and I have my wife and my son. By the way, if you see me after this and you want to ask me any questions, my life is an open book. Obviously, I'm up here to talk to you tonight. But I'm more than willing to answer anything that you have and talk with you. And I look forward to talking with each and every one of you. I also have a few more bumper stickers to give away if you'd like one. To talk more about the new pledge, I'd like now to welcome Parada Chris Hansen to the stage to share some exciting news. Thank you, Frauder John, for your inspirational words. We are most certainly honored to have you and your family here with us at Conclave tonight and cannot thank you enough for your willingness to share your, your story with us. Frauders and guests, it is now my distinct honor to announce Ta Kappa Epsilon's next commitment to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. As most of you know, this spring, Teak completed a $2.6 million commitment to St. Jude nearly two years ahead of schedule. It is now a great honor to share with you our next step in helping to achieve broader Danny Thomas's dream that no child should die in the dawn of life. Today we make history. Today we dedicate ourselves to building a better world by making the largest commitment by any fraternity to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Today we officially begin our campaign to raise $10 million over the next 10 years.
It started with one man's prayer and his promise that would change the world. I prayed to St. Jude, help me find my place in life and I'll build you a shrine. Entertainer Danny Thomas built St. Jude Children's Research Hospital with the dream that no child should die in the dawn of life. Since its doors opened in 1962, treatments invented at St. Jude have pushed the overall childhood cancer survival rate from 20% to more than 80% today. Danny Thomas's fraternity, Tall Kappa Epsilon, has supported him and the St. Jude mission every step of the way. It's really so unbelievable and such an honor to be a Teak, knowing that Danny Thomas founded St. Jude and was in the same organization that I am. And as St. Jude continues to lead the way the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases, Ta Kappa Epsilon continues to commit to and surpass impressive fundraising goals for the hospital. In 2011, Teak pledged to raise $1 million in five years. That goal was met a whole year early. Then, in 2016, the fraternity raised the bar with a pledge to support groundbreaking technology at St. Jude, the Proton Therapy Synchrotron Particle Accelerator. We made a commitment, a six-year commitment to $2.6 million, and we're excited that we, we achieved that commitment in a little over three years. Now, history will be made with Ta Kappa Epsilon's newest commitment, the largest of any men's fraternity. We are embarking on a $10 million, 10-year campaign to officially name the Bone Marrow Transplant Research Labs floor. Our fraternity has really been groundbreaking over time and in our, through our history, and we're excited to once again make history with St. Jude. The Bone Marrow Transplantation Program at St. Jude is one of the largest pediatric programs in the world. In fact, more than 3,000 transplants have been performed at St. Jude since 1982. Research from St. Jude showed that bone marrow transplant survival more than doubled in recent years for young, high-risk leukemia patients at St. Jude. And discoveries made in the St. Jude Bone Marrow Transplant and Cellular Therapy Research Labs are giving hope to patients like Carson. I just want to say that St. Jude is a great place and they've given me my life back. I think it's great at no matter what, people will always help us kids at St. Jude. Our first and foremost goal is to save our son, but in turn, it could save so many more just from the research they've done off him. The funding that we're helping to provide uh, to the St. Jude organization is really going directly to help everybody from the children to the researchers to the clinical staff. Teeks strive to build better men for a better world. And they stand behind Danny's dream that no child should die in the dawn of life. We believe that the essential elements of true brotherhood are love, charity, and esteem. Those three principles are not just a fraternal principle. They're life principles. They are charges to be the best person that you can and see the best in others. Prodder Danny Thomas brings a real sense of pride to our organization, someone who has done so much good for the world. It sets a, an expectation for the rest of us that we need to, to look to, uh, but also that we need to step up to on a daily basis. As Danny Thomas once said, those who work for the good are as those who do the good. And it's with that charge that Teeks realize their own purpose, creating a better world through personal growth and service to others. Brothers of Teak, on behalf of myself, and all the many children of St. Jude, I'd like to offer up a heartfelt thank you. Your hard work and your contributions to St. Jude ensure that the hospital and its continuing mission will go on for years to come, and it will ensure that one day we will find the cure. Brothers and guests, please join me in welcoming the Manager of Youth Development Programs and Field Operations for ALSAC, Mary-Kate Tolley. Thank you, Chris. On behalf of the entire team at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, I want to express our deepest appreciation for this commitment. 
As the video said, this is a historic commitment, not only in Teak's history, but in the hospital's history as well, because it is the largest commitment by any men's fraternity to St. Jude. Give yourselves a round of applause. And if history is any teacher, we know that you are gonna hit this aggressive commitment beforehand, right? Yeah. Whether it's your chapter's dedication to your St. Jude Wofren team, pulling an all-nighter at the St. Jude Up Till Dawn event, or Teak Weeks across the country, we have seen you fundraise all those money, all the dollars, and we know that every dollar counts. And how about that rally yesterday? In just one fun hour, you all raised, drum roll please, $23,000. And as you already know, the history of St. Jude and Teak is inextricably linked, as your frater Danny Thomas founded St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Danny's daughter, Marlo, penned this letter to your CEO, Donald Aldrich, as a thank you to the new commitment. I thank you, along with my sister, Terry, and brother, Tony, for honoring our dad's legacy in a way that would have meant the very most to him. He was so proud to call himself a member of Teak, and I know he would be overjoyed to see how his brothers continue to work together to help St. Jude lead the way the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases. God bless the good hearts of the men of Ta Kappa Epsilon. Sincerely, Marlo. And St. Jude can only continue our great work with you by our side. Your work will help us take those survival rates to 100%, and not within the next 50 years, within the next decade. We will not quit until we fulfill Danny Thomas's dream that no child will die in the dawn of life. Once again, on behalf of the patients, the researchers, the doctors, and everyone that works at St. Jude, our deepest appreciation to Teak for supporting Danny Thomas and the St. Jude mission. You truly are making better men and striving for a better world. Thank you again. Thank you, Mary Kate, and thank you to everyone at St. Jude for continuing to change the lives of children all over the world.